Scott, I know you're a long-term uh, investor, but I've got to ask you what your take was on this extraordinary action both today and of, of the last week. Well, well, Wolf, I have a lot of trading in my background. And, you know, anytime uh, when you see days like that, you have to think like a trader to really try to understand what's going on. And I think really when you see the Dow, when you see the market down as much as it was uh, and then close, you know, strongly or at least in positive territory, uh, that, mass may, uh, that should make you feel pretty good. Uh, you know, we were really close. If we would have closed over the 200-day moving average in the S&P 500, I would have felt really good, but we we're 25, 30 points below under that. So uh, that's what really we'd like to see next short term, uh, but certainly we've been uh, pounding the table to our clients for a long time. When you see a pullback, especially, you know, we haven't seen a 10% or it's been a long time, uh, you need to have a plan. And when you see the pullback, you need to Execute it. And, and so what is that plan that you've been talking to your clients about over, over the last couple of weeks? What's the top sector buy at the moment? Yeah, I, I tell you, right now, uh, Wilf, you know, these tech stocks have gotten hammered. So from a sector perspective, uh, we've liked technology. Uh, we like communication services. Those are really the two growthy type sectors that we're more interested in. And then we like industrials and financials. And I thought it was interesting. You know, I looked to see what the best performing sectors were just for the one day today. And, you know, those four sectors were in the top six performers today. So I think that makes you feel good about our positioning as we look out over the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, so that's really where we want to be. We think this recovery is going to continue. Uh, we think inflation is going to decelerate. We don't think the Fed's uh, going to make a mistake. And we certainly look for some supply chain easing up at least uh, late in the year. So I think you got to believe those things to really to really be buying stocks down in here. Uh, but we think it's time to, to step in for sure. But tech and communication services, they may have been in the top today, Scott, but that's because they've been in the bottom of, of this whole market downturn over the last few weeks to start the yeah, year. Yeah, if, if we are going into a tightening mode, doesn't it doesn't it stand to reason? I mean, this and this might be consensus at this point that everything that did well during this enormous period of liquidity in the last few years will get will will pull back because it's going the other way. Well, you know, Sarah, if you look at the first 11 months of last year, you know, technology was on a pretty good tear there. And it's really been, you know, let's call it close to two months that it's underperformed in this rising interest rate environment. And for us, the way we think of it, you know, where, where are the steady earnings going to come from? Who's going to be able to make money, uh, whether the economy is slowing down like it probably is going to do uh, or not? And, and technology is one of those uh, one of those areas, you know, we're looking for interest rates, the 10 year to maybe work its way up to two and a quarter by the end of the year. That's not that much higher than where we are now. So while technology is certainly uh, sensitive to interest rates increasing as people have to value those future cash flows back to the present, um, we don't think it's going to stop technology from one, being one of the best performers as we look out over the course of the year.